A lot of my research is sort of happening under this umbrella called Hacking the Archive, which is um, a collective uh, civic project of, of thinking through uh, how could we co-design new plans for the future. And so it really sort of takes its prompt from the idea that there are so many uh, movement makers and activists who were instrumental to so many of the gains that uh, were won in terms of progressive politics in the 1960s. And so if I think about them as a group, and, um, and as we, we should, many of those movement makers and actors were in their 20s and 30s at that time which of course means that now they're in their 70s and 80s, or, or of an advanced age, but many of, many of these folks are still engaged in mobilizations around um, affordable housing, around better jobs, around um, entrepreneurship, around uh, just general sort of reform of cities. And during my time in City Hall, um, in my role as a director of economic policy, I was really struck by when uh, activists or advocates were uh, opposing a development project or were sort of critiquing an action by the mayor or decision that was being made, the people that would show up to City Hall were of advanced age as well, were, were many of these folks who had, been, had a lifetime of an engagement on these very critical frontline issues. And uh, I was always looking for the rest of the crowd. I was looking for the crowd that was um, 40 years old, 30 years old, 20 years old. How do we understand who's bringing up the rest of the movement? And so um, that very important sort of breakdown generationally was something that was really, really made an impression on me while I was in, um, in government service. And certainly as I was researching at the same time, really, this history about the anti-highway movement, um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was very clear to me that there was a sort of this disconnect. Yet the issues and some of the critique of centralized authority in government, some of the critique of, of, of federal spending, some of the critique of what it means to, uh, to, to, to create an agenda of disinvestment for a neighborhood, like all of that was still consistent. So Hacking the Archive as a project really takes on this issue of a generational sort of disconnect and also is asking us to consider the archive as a repository, though incomplete as it is, a repository of ideas, of strategies, of critiques from the past that uh, oftentimes are just sitting in almost like sort of this dusty bin of history, but uh, the archive often holds um, ideas, gems, knowledge of other kinds of communities or other kinds of actions that could be in service to folks now. So, um, to put it very simply, the idea was to bring archivists to the table with activists uh, and students and residents to uh, take on a particular question for a neighborhood or a community and to create a hackathon. And so we worked with archivists uh, and community-based organizations over a period of almost six months. The community-based organization would say, this is the question that we have that we want to be able to answer with our residents, with our constituents, that has to do with the past, something about their past history or past action in the neighborhood. Um, the archivists then culled their collections, so we worked with archivists at, uh, at UMass, at Roxbury Community College, um, at the Harvard Schlesinger Library, also at Northeastern, uh, wh where there are special collections that really are about, again, people who had very different ideas about how the city could be and function, um, and their, their stories um, and their uh, radical plans exist in lots of different fragments across several institutional archives. So the idea was to let the archivists spend time trying to call their different collections as they answer these particular questions from uh, community-based organizations, and then to put a public call out to people at the end of the six months when we gathered all this information, and then let teams be assembled where they could uh, uh, tackle a particular question and then use the archive to bear. So um, that was um, incredible 
to us because what it allowed us to do is to allow people who don't necessarily have access to an institutional archive or people who don't necessarily have deep understanding of an issue in a neighborhood to have a quick way to share information, to have a quick way to form um, a very nimble team of, of, of problem solving and then to then offer back to community members their idea, which is right basically what you do in a hack. So folks hacked away for two days, um, had a full day on a Saturday. At the end of it, each team was responsible for pitching to a team of judges, which were residents and other stakeholders, and then sharing their ideas more broadly. So through Hacking the Archive, it's very much about sort of gamifying and operationalizing what it means to help a community have a much longer, deeper tail of knowledge that they're mining from and also allowing younger folks um, and folks who are, uh, who are older to share from their experiences but also share from other people's witness in the archive. And um, very exciting kind of as a researcher, very exciting for myself as a resident to see the ways that we can uh, share information um, in a very quick um, and focused way and use that to help equip people who who want to have more support for more investment in their plan so they can use those plans to to mobilize additional resources and, and sometimes to actually get other kind of institutions including government entities on board with them so that is the hope and the hope is to be able to look far into the future to have like a generational perspective so we're looking 50 years into the future um, in, the, in, in a way that's informed by looking 50 years into the past so in the end, the work is a hundred year work of really bringing that to bear and how we think about planning, how we think about creating cities that are producing wellness and well-being and not just profit.